Hello and welcome back to your 3ds Max tutorials. So up until this point we've been pretty much getting familiar with 3ds Max, its interface and so on. And I strongly recommend that you really um, familiarize yourself with the first couple of tutorials as it will help the more complex modeling become a lot more manageable. So I'm going to kick off this tutorial um, I'm going to show the importance of grouping. I don't want to keep going on about it, but it really is a, a, a great tool, and it's important that you that you understand um, the grouping the grouping aspect of um, dealing with a large number of objects. So I'm just going to start off. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a, a, a double a double whammy here. I'm going to import an in, an Autodesk in, Autodesk Inventor file, which is a, an external file to 3ds Max, of course. And the same will the same will apply when importing any any um, external external file. So simply just go up to your application button, go to import, just hover over import, and you'll see merge. It says insert objects from external 3ds Max files into the current scene. So we click on that, and you'll see down the bottom here, it um, it will have 3ds Max by default. So just click on 3ds Max and go to all files, and then simply. Go into your folder and let me see. Just go into the folder where you have your, your model, wardrobe modeling, and I'm just gonna find a pretty a pretty big um a big assembly from Autodesk Inventor which has a lot of parts and I'm gonna bring that in and I'm gonna, gonna pause the video while this while this loads. But before I do, it's, it's asking me here, do I want to import as a body object or a mesh? So we're going to leave it as body objects. We can completely replace the current scene because we don't have anything in it at the moment. But if we did have, you can simply click merge with current scene and it will just add your assembly to the objects that you have in the, in the scene. And this is fine, import materials and IDs. And with the mesh resolution, if you were to lessen this, well, your objects will become much more faceted, and the surfaces will be faceted. There'll be a lot more, um, a lot less segments. Whereas if you increase the resolution, well, it's really going to slow down 3ds Max. It's going to slow down your computer. So I just leave it by default as it is at the moment. And Inventor File Vertical Direction. We'll just make sure that's clicked to uh, Z, and press OK. And I'm just going to pause this and let it load up for a second. Okay, so that's done. So you can see, first of all, I'm just going to rotate this so you can see what we have in here. So we have a wardrobe, a bed, a little shelf, two walls, and a, and a floor. So you can see on the left that these, this, this entire assembly is made up of a large, large number of objects. And you can see on the left that they're already grouped. So if I click on any, any part of the model, or of the assembly, then the entire list of objects is highlighted. So this is where grouping comes in handy. By default, 3ds Max has grouped every single part as one, okay, within the, within the assembly. So if I just highlight the entire and uh, the entire scene, go back up to group and ungroup, click away, and then now we have sub assembly sub assemblies, which make up the entire assembly of the room. So I can take the bed and I can move it now. And same with the wardrobe. And I can also I can break this down again even further into into more um, into less into less objects or less parts. So again I have the wardrobe highlighted. Go to group and ungroup. Click away. And let me just actually increase the the, the screen here so you can see everything nice and clear. So you can see these um, doors these sliding doors. Are, are now uh, they're now editable. They can be they can be moved. Here we have these guys, which are rotating doors. Hold on, no, I just want to make sure my angle toggle is on. The snap is turned on. And I'm going to rotate that about 120 degrees. Same with this guy, 120 degrees. And I'm going to move both of them out because the pivot point is not rotating from where it should. Anyway, that's it. So now you can see it can be edited and just as it as if it was drawn within 3ds Max itself. Okay, and one more great little tip. Um, if you're if you have 
I'm just going to maximize every, or unmaximize that viewport. So if you want to replace this current scene, rather than going to create a new scene, because if you have certain settings and certain layouts like these viewports, if I go to new, replace scene, well these viewports will all be zoomed in. So if you want to actually reset the entire scene, you can go up to your application button and reset. Don't save. Now, so there we are, back to back to square one. It's a handy little handy little tool. Okay, so let's get into creating some objects from our own geometry. So I'm going to zoom in over here to our uh, command bar, our command panel, and you can see here in our create um, in our create tab. We have geometry, but right beside that then we have shapes. So if you click on shapes, and for now, um, well, I'm just gonna run through a few of them first actually. So I'm just gonna click on rectangle. I'm gonna zoom back out. And I'm just gonna draw in a simple rectangle. Okay, so that's, that's pretty straightforward. We can then go into our modifier, and into our, into our rectangle, and we can adjust our dimensions pretty easily by clicking and dragging. As, as before but if we if we click on the rendering uh, um, command you can see here that we have radial and rectangular nothing, hap nothing happens at the moment but if you go to enable in renderer or enable in viewport so if we go to enable in viewport now we can see it's radial so the entire and um, the entire uh, rectangle is now like a, like a tube and if we go to rectangular, then it's a square section object. Okay, so that's just handy to know. So I'm going to delete that. Back into create, into splines uh, from shapes. And now I'm going to just draw a line. And so to get this going, I'm just going to pick a point somewhere within the grid, somewhere central within the grid. I'm going to click it, let go. And oh, sorry. I want to uncheck. I want to uncheck enable in viewport. I just want this to be a, a simple line. Okay, so we click, let go, and then we can move around at an angle as we wish. If you hold down the shift key, then it will automatically give you um, straight lines, horizontal or vertical, in each direction. Okay, so I want to keep this straight. Click. And I can click over again. If you click and drag, well then it becomes a spline. This is actually a, a Bezier spline. You can see, hold on now. If you just see down here on the command panel, you can see you have Bezier, smooth, or corner. So I'm gonna zoom back out again. I'm gonna delete that and start fresh because I wanna show you a few different uh, commands, a few different tools that will help your, your drawing become very, very efficient. So I'm going to click, go at an angle, you click, and to make sure that this is going straight, I'm going to hold down shift, then I'm going straight back up again. I'll go over here at a bit of an angle, and another bit of an angle again. Now I'm going to hold down shift to keep it horizontal, back down again somewhere like so, and that's fine, and then shift, and roughly thereabouts on the on the black line. And if you right click, then that will cancel that. Um, it'll, it'll cancel that um, that command. Okay, so now we have a, 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 a funky kind of a shape here. If we go into our modifier tab. Now we can see we can deal with this. This is now we can now deal with this at the sub object level. So it's not actually an object just left just yet. It's pretty much just made from lines and points, which are vertex, vertices, uh, segments, and splines. Okay, so we're going to click on uh, vertex. Let's, I'm going to zoom in on this entire screen. Let's pick these two vertex, and then on the fillet tool, click on fillet. Then once you see the little icon, you can just click and drag till those become uh, together, like so. You can uh, right click to escape and now we can pick those two points that are that are merged and if we go over here to weld in our command panel I'll zoom in for you so you have weld and now those two points have become one 
Again, we can take these two points, we can right click, and you can see here we have smooth, bezier. So we're gonna just select bezier for now. Actually, I'll undo that. Do one at a time. Right click, bezier, and let's rotate that, like so. Zoom out here, and we'll do the same with this other guy, bezier. We'll rotate him just slightly, and actually, let's take this guy and let's move him in a touch to give us a narrow, a narrow wall. Move him in a touch. Okay. I'm also now. I'm going to select this line, which is a, a segment. Select that. I'm going to move that in a bit, and then I'm going to pick this last point. And then I'm going to go to fill it, if I can find it. Oh, I'm on segments, sorry. So I'll click on vertex, pick that point, then go to fill it, click and drag up. And that's a good, that's a good shape. So now we have what looks like a half of a glass. So if we go to our modifier list, go down to L, find laid, and now we have this a rotated object. If we simply go over here to align and min, now you can see we have this glass shape. It may be a bit out of out of uh, proportion, but you get the you get the picture. You get the idea. Okay, so that's a, a little introduction to creating some shapes. I recommend that you play around with that. It's a very useful tool, so you can create your own shapes and. In our next tutorial, we'll move on again to some uh, creating some more complex geometry. But in the meantime, I recommend that you uh, have some fun and play around with creating your own shapes and your own uh, your own objects uh, from your own geometry. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.